Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm Zelp and today we're going to do a comparison video between two really good Rojack weapons which is the APOC and also the Karstenok. Now I decided to compare them both with the Zeki versions. Uh, the reason is because I'm also wanting to test out the Death Blossom. And I feel like what turrets would benefit more from this mod than something that has really high overheat. Now I'd like to point out that I got this as a donation from one of you guys and I thank you very much for it. But currently I really don't know which is the best turrets to be using with this avionics. So the discussion of the day down in the comments will be what's best to be used with Death Blossom, if it's even worth using, and of course why. So over here you can see that I do not have the best predator. This means that if the turret that we're comparing has really good critical chance, like for example the APOC, uh, it's not going to benefit from this mod as much as if I were to have something even better. And also to make this work a little bit better in case there's people coming in spamming my void holes and also particle ramp, I'm going to remove them. Now let's come back to the turrets and compare them by stats. So if I were to take a look at let's say the Karsenok, I'm lucky enough to get a bonus 59.2% so it shoots really really fast, accuracy is only 50 um, which in comparison to the Zaki APOC is 66.7. Slightly more accurate, but there's something that they did not mention here is the flight speed. So when the uh, target is really far away, it actually gets really hard to hit. So you actually have two different things that you kind of want to work with. Not only is the accuracy important, but also the flight speed, because if the flight speed is bad, your personal accuracy is going to be bad as well. If you look at the APOX critical chance, it has 30% which is really generous and really good where else for the Karsenok, it's only at 13%. Now the critical chance is also sort of a damage multiplier, you just need to factor in the critical damage as well and it kind of works that way. So in this case, even though we haven't looked at the base stats for the damage, um, the APOC already have a better damage multiplier. Now next they have the same critical multiplier but I kind of want you to focus on the fall off. Now the fall off kind of works like it will do the maximum damage that it could do if it's let's say less than 500 meters and it'll do the minimum after 1000 meters. But every weapon also has a maximum range where it can reach. So after that it actually does no damage at all. But sadly we're not given these informations and I don't really know how to test it. Now if you look over to the Karsenok, it has much better range. Um, instead of 500, it has 2000 at the initial and then after that instead of 1000, it has 4000 uh, for this furthest. This means that you can shoot enemies from really really far range and you don't really need to worry about your damage lowered. In my opinion, if you are at the pilot seat, this is just so much better because of the range. Now having higher range means that you could be targeting something really far. When something is really far, the angle doesn't change as much as when something comes really close. So you don't have to turn your ship that much in order to aim for what it is that you're shooting. And it is also because if you're aiming for something really far and it's coming your direction, you actually get a much accurate shot because flight speed doesn't really matter that much, it's coming straight at you. Where else, even if the target is really far and using an APOC, even though you're hitting your targets, you are doing like the minimum damage that you could. So this is one very good upper hand that the Karsenok has that the APOC does not range. Now let's take a look at the fire rate. This one has 15. Whereas the APOC, it only has 8.33. So the Karsenok has almost double the fire rate of the APOC. So fire rate also translates into damage multiplier, which is one of the reasons why you kind of want to have fire rate for your Mesa's Peacemaker. But in real Jack, the higher fire rate is, the higher you overheat. But however, if you look at the heat acceleration for the APOC, it's 40. Whereas for the Karsenok, it is only 20. So in terms of how long they can fire before they overheat, it seems like it's somewhat similar but not exactly. So since the Karsenok has higher fire rate, it benefits a lot more from fire rate buffs. And its natural bonus from the Zaki gives you fire rate. So in this case, I have a 59.2% fire rate and that would translate into 23.87 fire rate. Well, so if you look at the APOC, um, it has a 95.8% and that would translate to 13.31 fire rate. Not only is the Karsenok a lot better, but it is also benefiting from the Zetki uh, bonus 
given, which is that 59.2% fire rate, a lot more than the APOC, simply because it multiplies its fire rate by an extra about 60%. What else? An extra 60% for something that only has, uh, let's say, 8.33 fire rate is not going to be as much as the Carcinol. Next, let's take a look at the status. For the APOC, it is only 10%, what else? For the Carcinol, it is 26%. Now, status is really good, especially if you have Plasma on. Uh, what this does is that it reduces the enemy's so effect armor, which allows you to one-shot it with the Ford artillery. Now we finally come down to the base damage. If you look at the Zetki APOC, you get almost 400 from the base damage. And if you look at the Karsanok, you only get slightly more than 200. So in terms of damage, if you can get the enemy in range, the APOC is a beast. Not only does it have high critical, but it also has really high base damage. But the Karsnok also has better fire rate, which means that technically DPS wise, it also does a decent amount. And on top of that, it can start shooting enemies at a further distance, which means you can start doing damage a lot sooner and potentially a lot more than the APOC. Not to mention that the Karsnok, at least right now from what we can see in the stats, has lower heat acceleration, which means that there's more room for mistakes. And overall number of shots fired is pretty much double the APOC. A lot also depends on where you're fighting at. If you go to Vale, for example, they have a lot of healing bubbles. The higher fire rate weapon is going to destroy those bubbles a lot faster. Okay, so enough of that, um, sort of like a theory crafting, in my opinion, uh, based on the stats. Let's go in and see how it feels. So I haven't tried the Zetki um, Karsunok. I've tried the Vadar version simply because um, back in the day, Zetki actually overheats way too fast and it's not uh, suitable for high fire rate weapons so i have the Karsnok on my pilot seat uh, this is the Zetki uh, one thing that i don't like about the death blossom is that it's hidden over here so let's say if i were to use it uh, it doesn't display how long do i have it on um, and it also doesn't show like uh, what is the uh, cooldown after it wears off but as you can see it's really fun because you can keep shooting uh, I was a little bit further away just now so it didn't it didn't do much damage I should have come a little bit closer before I activate it oh seems like it's still on nice up oh, it's ended you can actually see that now I have kind of like overheat happening I'm still liking a lot more than APOC simply because you don't have to um, aim for that much and even though it's less accurate the inaccuracy can actually sometimes uh, complement the human's inaccuracy if that makes sense now being particle um, the status particle the uh, more times you proc the weaker the enemy gets because his armor is being reduced so having it on a very high fire rate weapon also makes it super good that means in the long run, if I keep firing at the same target, I think the Karsana is going to do way more damage than the APOC. See, if I'm having trouble hitting with the Karsana, it's going to be a lot harder to hit with the APOC, in my opinion at least. But then again, maybe you are like the next Shroud, Ooh. and you're just really good at this. Okay, so over here we have a bubble. Let's see how fast or how well that breaks it. I'm actually not really sure if the Photor is faster or the Cosnock is faster at breaking bubbles. Um, but the feeling or what I, I think is that the Photor is faster. But then again, never tried it with a Zaki version of the Cosnock on the bubble. Previously I tried in the last video is on a Vadar Cosnock. Ooh, where is this guy? There you go. Okay, let's break this. Nice. An Outrider. Nice. Good. See, when it comes to close and you want to shoot it, it gets... You have to turn the entire ship and that takes time. I actually feel like the Zatki version of the Karsanok is not bad. Like before, I highly recommend going for a Vadar simply because you can spam a lot longer. 
but I'm having mixed feelings now. Alright, so I want to try something. If I hit the maximum overheat, right, and then I use this, does it cancel off? No, you still have to wait for it to to regenerate. Oh, so for the APOC, we have to go pretty close because like from here, it's a little bit hard to hit. There you go. So you want it to be less than 500 meters to do the maximum amount of damage. Anything more than 1000, it's not going to be as great. So it feels like uh, the overheat is almost similar if not a little bit faster than the Karsnaut ZD. Now another thing that you might realize is that the uh, pre-aim uh, projectile has a helper. Like you see that white X mark. It's a lot more unpredictable. It goes a lot further from the target because the flight speed on this thing is really low. So you can see you have to actually aim a lot further away from the, the actual ship in order to hit it. Um, and it's one of those things that can be hard to see um, in certain situations. So right now I'm going to try and turn the Death Blossom on. See how this feels. So because I think the APOC actually um, experience what do you call a faster overheat, this might actually mean that this weapon, the APOC, is better for better for Death Blossom. <laughs> I'm not even letting go. Like, what's the point, right? Since I have the ability to keep shooting, I should just keep shooting. Oh no, the shields. Oh. You wear it off. 30 seconds in my opinion is just so low. Uh, but they should definitely, at least for the Death Blossom, show some kind of indication. So I'm going to try something which I think would be kind of interesting. I want to get some opinion from the randoms in my ship. Hi guys, uh, how is the side guns? Can you try the pilot gun? And tell me which do you like more so if you have to pick one which do you like more side or front side i guess oh ho ho wins uh what about you at two side we got three sides okay i didn't want to tell them what it was uh so that they don't compare based on what they know and they compare based on what they feel so there you have it i don't think it's bias of me to say that i think the car is better because the other two randoms that came in also like the side guns a lot more than the pilot gun one said that the pilot gun just overheats too fast and quite frankly, maybe he doesn't know this, but the uh, pilot gun also is harder to hit. So you kind of waste more bullets uh, in order to hit those targets. Let me know what are your thoughts down in the comments and also not to forget which turret works the best with Death Blossom uh, down in the comments. Whoopsie, I almost forgot about the Glyph Away winner. So Glyph Away winner for the question which Warframe is best for the real jet currently goes to Jalapino Joe. Nice name by the way. In his comments, he explained that most of the situations within the real jack is really just the uh, borders and to kill them is really easy if you have a good melee weapon, doesn't really matter the frame. So he would suggest that um, something that gives you some kind of arc wing advantage would be better. Therefore, he went with Wiz, simply because the buff can be carried into arc wing. I'm not too sure, but I think it also works when you enter a platform or if you just, you know, board a cruise ship. On top of everything else, the buff also works on teammates. So that's the reason why I'm using Wiz today and I kind of been using Wiz a while ago before I switched into Rhino simply because of Rhino's buff affecting the real jack. So I do highly agree that Wiz seems to be a really fun character to be playing for the real jack. So congratulations Jalapeno Joe, you won the glyph away. PM me on Discord or I think they call it DM me on Discord and I will send you the code. It's just that simple. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye.